The oceans are important, really, really important. Few of us fully understand just how important the oceans are, but it's important that we do because our actions, even small choices, are impacting them a lot. And without healthy oceans, well, things would look vastly different around here. So let's start by discussing this importance. And forgive me for saying the word important, what felt like 10 times, just trying to get a point across. The oceans are important. Having grown up on the rocky coast of Maine, the ocean's influence was inescapable. You needn't look further than our school's mascots to get the idea. Anyone outside of Maine always gets a laugh when I explain that not one, but both my middle and high school mascots were old wooden ships. From family members and friends to classmates and peers, our community relied on the ocean, not only for livelihoods, but something deeper and less definable. The ocean served as a source of inspiration for authors, artists, and poets, and as a young kid, it was our biggest playground. For Mainers, the ocean is inseparable from our heritage, identity, and culture. As the founder of Saltwater Classroom, a nonprofit focused on ocean education, I've come to realize that the ability of the ocean to shape lives and communities in this way is by no means unique to Maine. In fact, it's kind of the norm. In coastal communities all around the world, the ocean defines us. To begin with, more than 40% of the world's population lives less than 100 kilometers, roughly 60 miles, from the coast, many in fast-growing coastal cities. The livelihoods or the basic needs of more than 3 billion people are directly tied to marine and coastal biodiversity, just like they are in my hometown. Almost half of the world's population relies on the ocean as their main source of protein. The ocean is estimated to generate between three and six trillion dollars annually for our global economy. Over 80% of world trade is moved by the ocean and that number will inevitably continue to grow as Arctic ice melts and previously unexplored routes are made accessible. And while it's easy for those of us in coastal communities to grasp the importance of the ocean, it's understandably harder for people removed from it by hundreds or thousands of miles to fully comprehend just how important our oceans are. If you're not directly witnessing the food harvesting, the coastal tourism, the maritime trade, it's, with these, it's within reason to think that maybe the ocean doesn't impact you. If you find yourself thinking, yeah, I can see the ocean being important for Mainers or people who live on islands or fishermen, but I live in Nashville or Ciudad de Mexico and I don't even like seafood. So I'd encourage you to think again. Let's go deeper. The ocean is the defining feature of our planet. It covers almost three quarters of the surface of the globe and represents the world's single largest ecosystem. The ocean and the life it supports is responsible for generating over half of the world's oxygen supply. Every other breath we take, we ought to be thanking phytoplankton, kelp, seagrass, seaweed. On top of the air we breathe, the oceans drive our climate and shape our weather patterns, yes, even in Nashville or Mexico City. The ocean is the source of several innovative discoveries in sectors such as pharmaceuticals and agriculture, and with more than 80% of the ocean still unexplored, it inevitably holds the key to solving many future challenges in food production, health, and more. Life itself began in the ocean and has relied on its resilient and diverse systems every day since. Whereas most people may not fully understand just how critical the oceans are, I believe the majority would acknowledge that they are in a bit of a tricky place. I'd wager that most of you have heard of overfishing, maybe even bycatch. You've likely seen news stories about coral reefs declining. Maybe you've seen an example of coral bleaching. Stronger storms and tidal surges and sea level rise are topics you probably have some level of familiarity with. And if you've been to the coast in the past 
five years, chances are you've seen firsthand the issue of plastic pollution. There's really no denying it. Around the world, the ocean is suffering. Our human activity, largely in the last 70 years or so, has placed an enormous amount of stress on the ocean environment. Through coastal development, extractive industries, pollution, and the combustion of fossil fuels, ocean habitats have been destroyed, species threatened, and the delicate balance of the ocean reached over millennia, altered. Excessive harvesting has depleted fish stocks with over 30% of fisheries classified as overexploited. Increased atmospheric carbon dioxide has disrupted the very chemistry of seawater and led to the devastating phenomenon of ocean acidification. Marine pollution has reached unprecedented levels with a staggering average of 13,000 pieces of plastic present on every square kilometer of ocean. This ocean plastic degrades into microplastics, which have now been detected in marine organisms from plankton to whales, in, com in commercial seafood, and even in our drinking water. These problems and more pose serious threats, not only for the health of the ocean, but the health of humankind as well. Additionally, around the world, these burdens are unequally shared. With our growing dependence on the services provided by the ocean and its greater vulnerability, the way in which we respond to these challenges will ultimately dictate the future sustainability of our species. If we hope to protect our economies, our homes, our food sources, the respiratory system of our planet and the world's single largest ecosystem, we have to start treating our oceans differently. What do we do? What can you do? What is this all about? Education is the answer to understanding and one day reversing the undue stress humans have placed on the ocean. We have reached this point of severe degradation because as a species, we did not know how our actions were impacting the environment, but we can use that excuse no more. And now it is our responsibility to ensure that everyone knows. I was first introduced to the immense potential of environmental education during my undergraduate years at Northeastern University. At the time, my educational focus centered on urban coastal sustainability, and I had the opportunity to live and study in Viña del Mar, a seaside city in Chile. While researching the environmental and social scenarios impacting sustainable development in Latin America, it became clear to me that environmental education was not only necessary, but a fairly simple solution to pressing ocean issues. New technologies and innovations and management strategies are undoubtedly part of the picture, but for that picture to be the reality, for those strategies to really take hold, the base level, how we think about the oceans, must change. And this is where education comes in. There is a unique power vested in education to change the way in which society views and consequently treats the environment. When you learn about something, whether it's sea turtles or salt marshes, you gain an appreciation for that something. In turn, this appreciation leads you to assign value to it in your mind. And when something is of value to someone, it leads that individual to feel concern for it and possess a desire to protect it, an urge to see that no harm comes to it. Environmental education inspires people to make changes towards a sustainable future by equipping them with the necessary tools to make informed decisions about their environment, actions, and impact. It's an amazing thing, really, the power that learning has. And it doesn't take much. A thoughtfully crafted curriculum implemented widely across a city or community can significantly change the attitudes of an entire generation. This shift in thinking spurred by education is what is needed on a large scale for our oceans because of their undeniable planetary importance, because of their integral role in our human lives 
because of the severity and immediacy of the issues facing them, because of the very nature of the ocean, its inherent obscurity. We are land mammals, after all. And despite this, Education focused on the ocean, marine science or conservation, broadly referred to as ocean literacy, is largely absent from curricula around the world. This absence reflects the decades-long mindset of the ocean and ocean issues being cast aside, relegated to the back burner, that old out of sight, out of mind trope. Unfortunately, this has led to the state of our oceans today, exploited depleted, and polluted. Education has the power to change this, the power to eliminate the apparent underlying apathy towards the ocean. Education gives people a reason to care. Yes, it's certainly worth noting that there is a great deal of laudable action being taken to address ocean issues. There's progress in the form of marine protections and industry changes and responsible tourism and a wide swath of people making everyday choices to be better stewards of our environment. But in order to ensure lasting, significant, sustainable change, environmental stewardship, ocean stewardship must be the charge of everyone, not just the conscientious few. To achieve this societal, systematic shift, we must start at the beginning, and that is education. While in Chile, between time exploring the small fishing villages, the desert and salt flats in the north, the mountains in the south, I volunteered each week in a fifth grade classroom. I was here in this classroom in an impoverished neighborhood in the cerros or hills above the city that Everything I had learned up to that point, my background, my childhood, my experiences and education coalesced and I saw an opportunity, an opportunity for students around the world to learn about our oceans, connect with one another and share in this education and together grow a network of young people committed to our oceans. This is how Saltwater Classroom was born. Saltwater Classroom is committed to the vision of a sustainable future for our blue planet forged through education. What does this education look like? It's hands-on, experience-based, immersive learning designed to connect students, regardless of where they may live, to the ocean in new and meaningful ways, ways that will last and grow and naturally progress into a lifelong ethic of ocean stewardship. Whether through in-person workshops or virtual education, our program is driven by this proven, impactful approach. It's interdisciplinary, yes, rooted in science and conservation, but incorporating art and music and language because as humans, we connect to the ocean in all number of ways and our education should reflect this. Through this approach, we seek to inspire all students, because we all must be better stewards of the ocean, not just those with an inclination to science. And lastly, ocean education with Saltwater Classroom is global, covering over 70% of the planet. Our oceans and the many issues confronting them are about as global as it gets. Within this is an amazing opportunity to bridge geographic distances and cultural divides and unite students through a passion for the ocean. We achieve this by facilitating global connections through technology-integrated education, linking students in Maine and Mexico, for example, over a common interest or favorite species or local issue. I am often asked what an individual can do to help the ocean. And my answer is always, keep learning. Learn about an issue that speaks to you, whether it be microplastics or ocean acidification or a certain endangered species. Learn one thing that you can change in your home, your daily routine, your closet, your diet. Learn how you can make a difference in your community. Do a beach cleanup, sign and share a petition, champion legislation that drives progress. Be open to ways that you can broaden your understanding of the ocean and its role in our lives, 
in your life. And if you're able, support ocean education. Share it with your friends and encourage it in your community because there is a new wave of ocean education on the horizon. It's coming and it's growing. And I would like nothing more than for you to be a part of it. Thank you.